Since we're now in the final phase of this design project, we will finish the 3D model by incorporating photorealistic rendering techniques for technical communication purposes. These types of renderings can be used for marketing and sales purposes, general customer communication or communications to vendors and subcontractors. The reason is very simple why these types of visualization tools are so powerful. Because a picture tells a thousand words and this type of communication really emphasizes the details of any project and adds a tremendous value in time savings but make it easy to show exactly how everything should look in 3D. Now we have the 3D model finished and we'll look at rendering capabilities first inside AutoCAD. So I can change the visual style as you've seen before. There's a couple of different styles that come with it and there's a couple of one that we prepared. So this will be a shaded view where have my surfaces shaded in color. You can look at elevations. That's pretty good for that. I can use that to render, set the light source, or just take the sun status. Depending on the location where I'm at, it sh shows different shadows for different times of the day. The location can be specified here, either from the map or from a file, and you can set the date and time of the day. I can create cameras and use AutoCAD to render it inside AutoCAD or render it in the cloud online, which goes a lot faster with more computing power and have a render gallery for every project. So that will just upload to Autodesk 360 and use their render capabilities. That's the rendering inside of AutoCAD. And we go to a different visual style now. Turn the shadows off. Rotate them all around. And uh, the nice thing about the database is every material has its own texture that comes with it. So if I go to realistic, I right away have different textures for plaster or siding. In this case, a brick veneer, siding different wood species. So you can see the OSB and here spruce studs. And if I go and change one of those posts, every object has its own object information. Go just for one object and take the post on the corner here. So there you can see the texture set that's spruce right now. And if I set that to laminate timber, construction wood, oak, larch, any other wood species, beech, pine, pine's okay for that. And you can see right away how the texture changes the object. So I already have fairly realistic textures to work with and render my 3D objects. The normal work environment in AutoCAD is we have a parallel uh, perspective, so all the parallel lines show up as really being parallel. I can also switch that for a more realistic view and it goes to a central perspective. So that goes from parallel to perspective here. I have a horizon that gives me an idea of where the building is in space and that already looks a bit more realistic than before. Instead of AutoCAD we can of course export to different file formats. So for this 3D model I take something that's very common, I just export it to SketchUp. So we have export here, different formats, and we just take a SketchUp export, which will open it directly inside SketchUp. There's another sorting routine, a couple of objects did not have a label. Okay. So I'm going to export that to a SketchUp template take minor holes out to make it easier on the computer to calculate and just hit OK and that will open directly inside of SketchUp. So this is SketchUp and I have the same 3D model that I had in AutoCAD with the same textures all transferred, individual volumes and uh, yeah from SketchUp, uh, the world is pretty much open. 
So there's rendering capabilities inside SketchUp that are very interesting. And I can still add furniture and things in here. So we organize that in building elements. So if I just take the roof off and show you top floor here, take the ceiling panels off. So you can actually look inside top floor. It's also good for the client to play around with it. Everybody can download SketchUp from the internet and just have a walk through their new home to be. I can start to put furniture inside. We have it organized in a building structure. So that's the roof taken off. I can take entire top floor, just hide that. And in ground floor, take the ceiling panels off so I can look inside. Can bring individual ceiling panels back in for different ceilings. Let's hide those again. Okay. Structural objects, wall objects, and object vis visualization. So if I take the wall objects off, I'll be able to actually see the structure. The structure is organized by AutoCAD layers. So if I bring up the layers, I have the same layers that we had in our 3D model in AutoCAD. So 20 is the room volumes. I have outside layers, bring that all on and then show you the structure step by step. So minus seven would be my brick veneer. And then we go from outside to inside. Minus six is the siding. Minus five will hide minus four, then minus three is the insulation panels, minus two takes off the sheeting on the inside, and minus two on the plywood on the outside walls. And now I have just the stick frame and my inside chips and boards left. Let's zoom in on that area here where we put that big glue lamp on top of the window, get the window objects out of the way. So this is also a way to communicate with technical people and show them certain areas of the of the building, highlight details. Now, let's roll back to the original model and uh, brush this up and make it look nice. So I add a front garden, just a couple of things that I took from the internet, bushes and grass. Okay, move that in place. Then this shows the rest of the plot of the building. And move over here. We have to add a nice raw iron gate. All things that are free for download within SketchUp, which makes it really interesting. Add a car. And then uh, the railing for the balcony up there. Okay, that's the railing. And if I switch to scene number two, where I prepared a view with the shadow, you already see that it's getting a little bit more realistic. I can turn the shade settings, shadow settings on and off, define the time of the year. Again, set the location in Google Maps. And from there, with rendering software, we can just make that really shine, have a ray tracer, the car reflects, then take Google Street View and actually put that house in the place where it should be. And right there is a rendering of the bedroom. You can see the light on the outside, the internal light sources, rendering of the TV. So that's the pictures that should really be able to sell the project to the end client. The interesting thing about uh, all the tools that we see being developed today that help designers and engineers and builders to construct uh, is that they uh, blend all of the necessary elements that we've talked about. And what they do is um, they provide us a template uh, going forward uh, that we can use to accept new technologies that emerge and new building materials, uh, new ways of designing, new ways of interpreting space, uh, locations, because as we know, um, 
There are, there are areas that we occupy now that, that may not uh, be occupiable into the uh, foreseeable future. And so uh, as we continue to evolve uh, our built environment, these tools are going to be absolutely necessary in order to give the level of uh, assurance that we need to have the uh, safe and uh, well-performing uh, built environment going into the next century. Structure Homes is a organization. Uh, we build about 10 to 15 custom homes every year. We're a design-build firm. And we take a lot of clients through that design-build process. And we have realized that a lot of clients, when we're going through it, look at 2D plans, and they don't really have an understanding or really good feel for the spaces. So trying to design a dream home for a client without them really having an understanding of, of what the spaces look like, how the rooms unfold, is until it's built, is, has created some challenges. With the Dietrich software, we realized to have 3D capabilities is really a, a wonderful tool. So we can design homes with our clients, and they can literally walk through the spaces, and they can see the spaces in a three-dimensional manner, which really helps guide them and allow them to have a better understanding for what the space feels like and how the home is going to ultimately live. If we can do that in the design stage and correct a lot of those issues or concerns up front, it saves a lot of time, it saves a lot of money, and I think it's a it's a wonderful process, it's a wonderful development to use the new technology and to see plans develop in three dimensions is a great tool for us.